For shipwrecked treasure hunters, it's a game of patience and persistence and being in the right spot at the right time. Deep down on the bottom of the Baltic Sea near Sweden, a team of salvage experts may have hit the jackpot. The trouble is, so far, this bounty can't be explained. Peter Lindbergh has been in the business for almost 20 years. This vintage champagne hauled from a century-old wreck, one of his sweetest successes. Until, that is, the commercial diver stumbled upon an incredible find. We had been out for nine days and, uh, well, we were quite tired and uh, we were on our way home, but we, we uh, well, made a final run with the sonar fish and uh, suddenly this thing turned up and, uh, well, my first reaction was uh, to tell the guys that, hey, we have a UFO here on the bottom. Sonar readings show it's about 60 metres across, all the size of a jumbo jet, and it's not on its own down there. The Ocean Explorer team also found another smaller disc-shaped object nearby. Both show a rigid tail or drag marks more than 400 metres long. Their size and distinctive shape are generating some peculiar theories. Could this be the Star Wars Millennium Falcon, a plug to an inner world, or a marine version of Stonehenge? There has been uh, discussions about Russian uh, warships that were around, that they built in the end of the 1800s, uh, but they are smaller, only about 30 metres across, and uh, they weren't in the Baltic as well. Uh, of course, it can be uh, something else from a ship or wreck, but uh, still, it's quite big. Yeah, you have the disturbance, it's from the waves. Hmm. The head of archaeology at Sweden's Maritime Museums so it's, it's says this type of imaging, called a side-scan sonar, doesn't always reflect what's actually on the sea floor. Varying temperature and wave conditions can result in anomalies on the images. But the intriguing dimensions of this picture are capturing his attention. It's definitely something, at least. Um, I'm not sure that you will see very much when you go down. If it's, if it's a more natural geological formation, it might be that it's, it's hard to see. The sediments in the area are very loose. The side scan sonar tool sometimes uh, goes, goes down a little bit in soft sediments. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be interesting to see what it is. Andreas Olsen, who doesn't agree with treasure hunting and selling historical artefacts for profit, says the Baltic offers ideal conditions for preservation, with low salinity and no wood-boring organisms. It's helped protect many of Sweden's prized wrecks, including the 17th century warship Vasa. It was brought to the surface with its hull almost intact more than 50 years ago, and is now housed in its own museum in Stockholm. Right now, we know about approximately about 20,000 uh, objects, mostly shipwrecks, in the Baltic Sea, to a total. But I, I think we have at least 100,000. Uh, there's a lot of areas we haven't really uh, seen anything, and many shipwrecks are also hidden under under the seabed. So it's. Um, for, for an archaeologist, I think the, the, the Baltic Sea is, is like a shipwreck laboratory, the best in the world. One glittering rival is the North Atlantic, where a top salvage company has struck gold, or silver to be exact, twice. Odyssey Marine recently found two wartime shipwrecks off the coast of Ireland. On board could be hundreds of tonnes of silver. The American team, just like the Swedish crew, are waiting for calmer waters beginning in May to see if their discoveries will be all that they imagined. Peter Lindbergh is even preparing a submarine for tourists and private investors for a closer look at what really lies beneath. Brooke Bowman, CNN, London.